So here we have the uh, chip computer. It's a $9 computer. Uh, running Linux has flash memory built in, USB port, audio and video out, uh, and a bunch of GPIO pins. Let's say this scenario. Now when you get this, it's supposed to have an operating system on it. When mine came, it didn't quite work, but you can easily flash it through uh, the USB. But let's say this, th there's no, let's say you don't have a monitor to hook this up and you want to set it up as a headless machine. Well, there's no Ethernet port, but there is built-in Wi-Fi. So let's say you don't have a screen or a keyboard to plug into this, whatever the scenario is, but you want to get this up and running uh, and you want to connect it to Wi-Fi. That's just a, a made-up scenario I'm making uh, for her to do this. But uh, how would you go about doing that? Well, one way is through serial port connection. And if you look at the first three pins on this side of the board, and they're all nicely labeled on this device, you'll notice that we have ground, uh, transmit, and receive. Again, a closer shot here, you can see those first three pins are ground, transmit, and receive. And sure enough, if we hook up to those, uh, we can get a connection through serial ports. So, let's go ahead and do that. Many devices have serial ports on them that make it easy for you to connect to. It's nice when they're labeled like this and easy to use. So we have our ground, transmit, and receive on that end, and I'll hook that up to my USB connector at the other end. If I did not mention at the beginning of this video, this video is part of a series, be sure to check out all the other videos in this playlist because in the first few videos I go over things in a lot more detail. Right now I'm just skimming over and just looking at different devices that we can connect through serial port. And I am going to be using Screen as my connection program. There are plenty of other programs out there that you can use. And we are going to connect on my device, uh, my desktop computer, which is a Linux computer. It's under device, and I only have one serial port uh, connection hooked up, which is TTY USB 0, is case sensitive, and if you have more than one device, it may be USB 1 or 2 or 3, but the first device will be 0, and our broad rate is 1152. Zero, 00 for this device. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and let's see what happens. Okay, hit enter. Let me go ahead and plug the power into the device. And there we go. We start getting information up on the... I know this is not the most beautiful shot in the world, filming a screen like this, uh, but it does start up, and it does start up U-Boot, which is a very common bootloader for small devices like this, and quickly U-Boot gives you a lot of information on the device, and uh, lots of times it'll give you an option to stop the boot process by hitting any key, and that's what I've done here. So now we're in the bootloader, and at this point, uh, as you can see, I said you get information on the device, and if I type in help, I believe, there we go, you get a lot of U-boot commands. And lots of times you get things to where you can, uh, you know, flash the system, boot from USB, or maybe an SD card. But a lot of options there to help you fix a system. But one of the things that I like to do more commonly with these, when I connect through serial port, is I'm trying to get a root shell on the device. So uh, let me see if I just type in boot. Yep, if I hit boot, type boot and hit enter, it's going to continue the boot process. And this, like many small devices, is running Linux. So it's just going to do a regular Linux boot process and should drop me into a root shell once it's done booting. On many ARM devices, such as routers, modems, smart devices around your house, if you get a serial port connection, in many cases it will drop you to a root shell. Now. This chip device is running a full version of Debian, uh, and so it does bring you to a login screen here, which you can then log in using whatever username and password you have set, or whatever the default username and password is. And of course, you can always get root using sudo or the su command or a combination of the two. Um, but since we did have U boot there, if you were trying to get a root shell and you didn't have the information for the root user or any user on the device, uh, you could flash it with a system that you do have root privileges on, or uh, you should be able to boot an image and then change the system information by mounting the system and, and then churrooting rooting into it. A lot of options there. Uh, with the chip computer though, we do know the username and password, which on mine currently is chip for the username and chip for the password. I'm not sure if that was the default or if that's what I set it to, but you can always Google search the default username and password. 
But as you can see, serial port con connection works great. Now at this point, since we have a shell, we could, this device can do network over USB, so we could enable that and then we don't have to go through serial port anymore and network through USB is going to be a little bit faster, especially if you're going to be transferring files. Or we can set up the Wi-Fi and then just use the Wi-Fi network to transfer files or do whatever work we need to do. Uh, we could also, there's also Bluetooth built into this device and you can transfer files that way, although for most of what you're probably going to be doing, if you're going to be doing system work and transferring files, network's going to be a better option, whether it's through USB or flash. And then, of course, you can always get an Ethernet plug for it, but in that case, you wouldn't need to connect through serial port for what we're doing here. But that's it for this video. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to check out the rest in the playlist. Link in the description. Also, think about supporting my channel, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. I do thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.